Bang! Needs knives. I'm Jared, and we got a new Sigsar K320 made by Hogue Knives. Made in the USA. I love it. That's why I grabbed it. I grabbed it because, you know, I wanted to get some more USA made knives. And this thing is only a hundred and right around $130. They have another version that is the Coyote Tan. Um, the It's an entire knife coated in a Coyote Tan that's like a hundred. It's a few dollars more. It's not much more. Um, they have a Tonto version. They have an automatic version. They have a half serrated version. So there's lots of op or a few options with this knife. Now, I got the stonewashed version S30V and I personally like S30V more than S35VN. While S35 is a little bit of a tougher steel, I, I prefer the keen edge that I can get from S30V over S35VN. Not saying that S35 doesn't take a very keen edge, but in my opinion, S35 takes, or sorry, S30V takes a little bit finer of an edge that I prefer on my knives. So I love the bite that I get from S30V, um, you know, assuming that it has a good heat treat on it. Now we have a polymer handle here that is extremely comfortable. This thing is, you couldn't get this out of my hand, not in wet, oily conditions or anything. It is very, very grippy, very comfortable in the hand, whether you're choked up or you're back here. You have a nice little spot right there for your thumb, perfectly rust. Um, nice strong blade shape with a nice tall grind. So even though it is robust, I think it's 130 thousandths or something like that. Regardless, it's not too thick of a blade stock and they have a tall flat grind. So it's going to slice really good. And they did do uh, a pretty good edge on this. And we'll talk about that in a second. The polymer handle though, they have this grippy stuff right here. The same thing that they put on, well, six R's that they put on firearms but they put it under the clip. Now, if you look at it, you can actually see there's like a little fingerprint right there. That's where they knocked it down. So it's actually smooth right there. It's hard to see, but they made it smooth right there under the clip. But, you know, you know, the clip works fine. However, right now, I noticed that I have to grab my pants to put it in and out. Now, they gave this little you know, these things on the clip. I love the USA flag on the clip. That's awesome. But these little grippy spots for you to grip and pull out of your pocket, you know, we'll see how good they work. But, you know, I'm hoping that the clip breaks in a little bit and I'm able to put it in, in and out of my pocket one handed. As of right now, I do have to grab the seam in my pocket to put it in. To take it out, it's fine. I can take it out. But to put it in, this is a little bit too grippy to put it in one handed. But Hopefully the clip, you know, starts breaking in and it's not too, you know, because right now it has good tension. And because of the grippiness, it does help make it to where, you know, it is very grippy in the hand. But I think they could have just taken that out and just put it around the edges and stuff and it would have been just fine. Now... It does have a four-way reversible clip. And we're going to put a quick stud on this thing here in a second because... You know, let me move this. Now... The action is meh because the hole, you know, it's breaking in, but the hole is very small and there's no detent, you know, it's mushy. So, you know, if you give it a little like that, like if I was lefty EDC, this is what it would look like. But since I'm Neves Knives, this is what it looks like. So I'm just joking. That, I'm joking, Lefty. It's just a joke. No, to be honest, um, it is it is mushy. I do wish it was better. I, you know, it's not as satisfying as if it had a bigger hole. Now, if we look at my Benchmade Griptilian here, love the Benchmade Griptilian, especially the sheep's foot version. They are the same size, but my Benchmade Griptilian is very much broken in. I'm guessing this, oh, obviously, this is going to wind up doing the same thing and it will break in very nicely. But one of the benefits to this is this large opening hole. So it's a perfect size. It's not too big to where my finger slips through. It's just perfect to give me that amount of leverage that I like, whether it's the thumb or the, the reverse flick. Now, this one is, you know, you can slow roll it just fine. But the reverse flick, you just, you know, it's just a small hole, but you can get it, especially, you know, the smoother it gets. And I do feel it breaking in very nicely. It's just kind of, you know, you don't have, 
it's just mushy, you know, on the way out. So you don't have that, that good amount of resistance to give you for that thwack. Anyways, I'm going to try a quick stud really quick and quick and we'll see how that goes. Here is the quick stud. They come in a few different colors. I will link them down in the description. They are super easy to put on and take off. Now, you see how it just slips right on. And I will link these down in the description. You can use them on any knife that's under a certain thickness spine. That does make it a little better. Definitely easier to reverse flick, but it's still, I just wish the hole was bigger, but it is a little bit better, especially for a slow roll. The thumb stud, um, maybe I should put a little bit higher. Luckily it's so quick and easy. I mean, it's okay. I prefer to have it off on this knife, but a lot of people might prefer it and it does stop you from slipping up the blade. Again, we're going to talk about the, the blade a little bit more. Let me get this thing off. It's okay. It does work. But I imagine just the longer I have it, the more I mess with it. It's just going to get smoother and smoother. So it'll get easier and easier. And I'll get more and more used to it. And it, I am slowly getting used to it. But it just doesn't have a good enough size hole or good enough resistance. But it is getting a lot smoother. Now, this... <laughs> You guys already know I hate that. I do not like that. I, you know, it stops you. It's supposed to stop you from slipping up the blade. I don't think it really does. Your, your hand is already so secure. Although, you know, if it did have the edge all the way back to here, my finger would land right on the edge. So I would say just cut it out. Just either cut a half circle right there or make the whole choil go all the way to there. And I can easily do that because the blade stop is the able lock right there. So there's nothing in the way for me to cut this a little bit bigger or just make a notch right there. And that's probably what I'll do. Although it's fine the way it is. It's just when you're sharpening, it will hit your stone. So you want to be careful not to chip your stone when you're sharpening. And it has, it will have the tendency to recurve kind of like the old buck 110s you see that you've seen a sharpened a hundred times. They start recurving right there. So it does have the possibility of doing that. You'd want to be careful not to do that. Um, this is the thinnest point right there. So hopefully, um, I'm just going to take it out. I mean, I'll probably leave it for a good while. And then once it starts getting annoying, I'll just take it out. Uh, because, you know, why not? Why not have a good choil right there? It'll be easier to sharpen. I'm not going to worry about slipping up the blade. I'll still, you know, it'll be before. Let me see. If I took it out, my hand would land on an open area. Yeah, it'd be fine. Now, the edge. The edge is very keen. This thing came with a very, very sharp edge. Although the grind is slightly off from one side to the other, which I'm personally not worried about. It's not that big of a deal. It is somewhat of a convex edge, which, you know, probably just the slack in the belt when they sharpened it. Not a big deal at all. Um, it just adds maybe a little bit of strength to it. And especially as keen as it is, it is very, very sharp for a factory edge. But, uh, you know, I, um, I do see that it is off from one side to the other a little bit. Not a big deal. Most likely, like I said, it's just the grind. You know, not a big deal. Um, beautiful stone washing. It, is a, it seems like a durable. I do see a scratch already right there on it. But, you know, that's kind of the beauty with the stone wash. You don't have to worry about it. And I don't like polymer hand, handles normally. Normally, I'm not a fan of this type of material. But because of the kind of knife it is, this is a work knife. This is a tool. This is a knife that it's a tool. So it's the kind of material that you don't worry about, you know, smashing around on rocks and tossing on the ground. And, you know, it's going to be shock proof, um, rust proof, uh, you know, just everything proof. Now, so is G10. And yes, I do prefer G10, but, you know, th this is a, a very affordable knife 
USA made. So I'm not mad at it. I do understand it. I would prefer G10, but you know, this is a tool and that's kind of the beauty of it. This is a knife that you can abuse and toss around and not worry about. So not that big of a deal. <clears throat> like I said before, I do love the USA clip um, and the, the access lock or sorry, the, the able lock is easy to get to. It's not, it doesn't pop out too much. So it's not gonna be a problem getting in and out of the pockets, but it is very easy to get to. Looks like it has some good size phosphor bronze washers in there. I can see the oil that they put in there pretty good. So, you know, after that uh, breaks in, it'll get very smooth. Then you can see they got really big pins in there. I believe there's another one right there and another one right there, but this one's exposed on the inside. And we have three quarter liners with some weight relieving on these thick polymer handles that are sandwiched together. It does have a T10 pivot, T8 hardware all the way around. I do like to see that. Um, this one might be a little smaller right there, but these are all T8s. I did check them and then we have a T10 pivot and then T6s on the clip. Not a big deal. Um, and like I said, four way reversible clip. Awesome knife though. I am um, happy I did get it. You know, I'm glad I got to get it in the hand because I've been wanting to get more USA made knives on the channel and this is one of them. So now I just need to try the whole DECA. I still haven't tried a whole DECA. There's a bunch of USA made knives that I haven't tried that I should be trying from Hogue. Hogue has a, a pretty large catalog of knives I have not ever tried. I've had the, um, the, the Hogue Ritter, but I've, you know, that's about it from Hogue that I've had. I think that's all I've had from Hogue was the Hogue Ritter. So, you know, need to try some more. All right, guys. I love you guys. Thank you guys for watching. Peace.